Hi guys, welcome back to the channel again. Today we are gonna do another tactic tester video. Today the tactic is Bad Company by Nap again because I think Nap always makes some good tactic against the match engine or football manager. So without further ado, let's look at the formation straight away. It's a 4 2 3 1 having sleeper keeper on defense, two full backs on wing backs, and then two ball playing defenders. One deep line playmaker, one Mazala on attack, both wingers on support, attacking midfielder on support, advance forward on attack. Now let's look at the tactical style. Mentality is attacking, so in possession we're gonna have fairly wide attacking whip, pass into space, overlap right and left, play out defense, slightly shorter passing, extremely high tempo, run and defense, work ball into box, low crosses. In transition we're gonna have counter press, counter and distribute to fullbacks. Out of possession, we're gonna have use of the trap, much higher line of engagement, much higher line of defensive line, use tighter marking, extremely urgent pressing intensity, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, get stuck in a uh, classic setup. So we're gonna look at the player's instructions specifically. Advance forward, no specific instructions. No for the left winger as well. But the right winger will have cross from bind line and get further forward while the attacking midfielder also have no specific player instructions also no specific instructions for deep line playmaker also nothing for Bazala. wing backs we have pass it shorter, cross from bind line, shoot less often, sit narrower, close down more, tackle harder the right full backs doesn't have the sit narrow compared to the left wing backs because according to Nap, he wants this tactic to have left back comes inside tucks in alongside with the two ball playing defenders to become like a 3 at the back so while the right wing backs bombs up the wings to try to help out the attack so the ball playing defender both on passes shorter while the goalkeeper take field risk and ease off tackle let's also look at the throw-ins and corners only the attacking of course it's a long throw long throw is quite OP in full manager 2020 so make sure to try yourself also the corners is there anything specific to say Mm, nothing really, it's just normal net setup for the corners. So we're gonna look at the team I picked for Norwich. We're gonna have Team Kuhn go, Jamal Lewis at the left back, Zimmerman a ball playing defender was alongside Godfrey, while Aaron's right wing back, Tribal is a deep line playmaker, Lucas Rob as Mazala, Todd Cameron on the left. Maybe the whole team like the least suitable role is Todd Cameron because he's a right footer and want him to play as a winger is not possible but he likes to cut inside from left wing that's the only problem but I decided to stick with him because I think he's the best knowledge have we have Duda and Tanaki midfielder when they're on the right when they're also gonna have some problem because he likes to cut inside from both wings we see how it goes we got Timo Puki up top as the advanced playmaker so let's look at the predicted finishing spot for Norwich which we predicted to finish 20 but you totally expected it because Norwich just got promoted so this tactic according to Nap is a more gigan pressing style tactic extremely high tempo with short passing like Liverpool and Dortmund by Klopp heavy metal style it has a huge demands for the players physically also technically because it needs higher tempo to try to pass quicker we're gonna come back to this tactic part to talk about the Mazala and right winger and right wing backs what they're gonna do because we have Mazala will come up here acting like kind of like a half winger while we expect our right wing to come inside here while the right wing back also bomb up so we're gonna have overlap on the right hand side in this tactic specifically that's basically my understanding for the tactic we also gonna have another team so as you can see here, the next team will be Bayern Leverkusen which they are predicted to finish third in the Bundesliga just behind Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich and let's sim forward and see how the tactic do with these two teams So firstly, we're gonna look at Norwich which we finished 7 in the league with 16 wins, 12 draws, 10 losses Not too bad if considering we are predicted to finish 20, 13 above the prediction which is very good indeed so let's look at the squad stats first the most goals obviously Timo Puki with 24 
expected. We have Duda on 12. I think he scored quite a few penalty in my opinion. Yep. He scored 5 out of 8 because he is the main penalty taker for Norwich. We have Zimmerman with 10. Okay, that's actually quite surprising. We have Lucas Drop at 9, the Mazala. Todd Cornwall, left winger at 5. Assist wise, we have Buendia at 20. Max Ernst at 11. So you kind of can understand why I say the right wing back will bump up more compared to Jamal Lewis, the left wing back. Because Jamal Lewis only got, only got 3 assists compared to Max Ernst 11. Duda got 6 assists or so at the attacking midfielder. Rob, the Mazala got 5 assists. Todd Cornwall got 4 assists as the left winger. Even Timo Pugi himself got 4. The highest average rating for the team is Emil Buendia. I'm, okay. Zimmerman got 2nd, while Team Pukki got 3rd. Okay. Let's look detail into the stats. We have Timo Pukki as the 2nd highest scoring player in the league, which with 20 goals, just behind Aguero with 24. Buendia at 2nd alongside Mohamed Salah with 15 assists. Yellow cards, Aaron's second highest in the league, okay. Let's go details into the stats. We actually score fifth highest in the league with 61. Not too bad considering the attacking quality of Norwich. I know Buendia and Puki also quite decent, but still I think getting fifth is very good. Anything else? We have sixth highest average position. Uh, fourth highest tackling rate, okay. Anything else? Most foul makes the place. Okay, get stuck in the instructions. Gonna get quite a lot of foul. Uh, we got also fifth in best shooting accuracy. Let's go detail into the stats even more. So we have the most yellow cards in the league, ninety-seven. We actually created the most chances with hundred and thirty-three. With the tagging quality of Norwich, I will say that is very very good. Anything else worth highlighting? Eh, not much. Now let's look at the schedule, see how it went for the Norwich team throughout the whole season. We start off with quite a bad start actually. Three losses in a row already in the first month, losing to Liverpool 4-0 away, Southampton 2-0 and West Ham. But then losing to Leicester again, but we got lots of draws here during September to December. Let's highlight the important stats only. 1-1 draw against Man City, really good in my opinion for Norwich quality. 1-1 draw also against Chelsea. 1-1 draw also against Arsenal. 2-2 draw against Tottenham Hotspur. 2-0 win against Man United at Carroll Road. Okay. Anything else worth mentioning? 2-2 draw again against uh, Man City away. 1-1 one, one draw again against Chelsea. We got a lot of draw here with Norwich. 1-1 one, one draw in, in the league with Man City again at home this time. Oh, this Chelsea is actually EFL Cup semi-final leg one. We won the second leg with penalty. 1-1 one, one again, but we won with penalty. Draw against Chelsea again at Carroll Road. 1-1. One, one. Lots of draws like I mentioned. How about this? 3-0 win against Liverpool at home. Very convincing. Let's look at the stats actually. It's 50-50, not like really one-sided like Liverpool got lots of chances, we got really less. Just us being more clinical is actually very even, so you can tell the tactics actually work. So going to March, we actually won the EFL Cup with penalty 2-2 at the normal time, but won on penalty against Liverpool. We even got a trophy, okay. Lost 3 0 to Man United away, that's alright. Lost 3 1 to Tottenham away, that's alright as well. Lost 2 3 to Arsenal at home, okay. But and overall, did not bad for Norwich, in my opinion, getting 7 and considering drawing so many good teams and also winning the Car World Cup. Now let's look at Bayern Leverkusen. So Bayern Leverkusen actually won the Bundesliga with the Naps Bad Company tactic. Wow, we got 24 wins, draw 3 times, lost 7 times, didn't even losing to Bayern this season with this tag team. Only draw once, win against them as well. So, uh, really good, huh? Let's look at the squad stats first. 
Top scorer, we got Kevin Volan with 28 goals. Obviously, he's going to be the main advance forward. Charles Arangis and the Mazala. I bet, let's look at it. Uh, we can't, we can actually see the form, right? Yeah, he probably majority at the time playing Mazala, scoring quite a lot to go five games in a row here, as you can see. That's probably where he got his 14 goals. I think he's also taking penalties some. Yep, he scored some penalties as well, but still very good for Mazala. Kai Havard with 12 goals in the attacking midfielder, I bet. Yes, he is sometimes playing with Zala also, okay. We have Leon Bailey on 11 goals and 11 assists, I bet he made a deal of time playing left midfielder. Sometimes playing on the right as well, for wingers, okay. We have Bellarby with 9 goals, Star with 6, Trembendo with 6, probably both of them from set pieces. Yeah, we have 5, let's get assist chart. Then Mibai with 19 assists. I think I kind of understand now why Vikons actually got the best of him and make him the player of the season during the Dominance Breaker save. He got such a good corner and also free kick stats. And also, I think he playing the playmaker role is going to help him a lot. Let's look at the form of him. He's probably playing lots of deep line playmaker. Sometimes playing attacking midfielder as well. He's been... He's playing around... But major deep deep line playmaker, I guess. That's probably where he get the most assists also from set pieces, like I mentioned. Bailey with eleventh wingers, obviously. Charles Rangis as the Mazala got seven. Last Bender as the right back, I think. Yes, indeed. He played major all the games in right back actually, having seven assists. Bellarabi got six assists or so as a winger. Wendell got four assists as the left wing back. But you kind of understand, I mentioned earlier, the left wing back is supposed to stay narrow to try to protect the back line a little bit compared to the right wing back. Who has the highest average rating? Let's have a look. Karim Demerbay, of course. Volan follows behind Ta and then Bailey, Arangis, and then only Harvard. I'm surprised by that. So let's go detail into the stats. We scored most goals in the leagues with 71, beating everyone else, obviously. And let's have a look at anything else. Least goals conceded alongside Cologne with 22, which means we conceded less than one goals per game. Better than Bayern shows a lot when we have Radetzky while Bayern have Noel. Most clean sheets in the league. Actually not the highest fouls, like fourth is not too bad. We have to get stuck in options on obviously. Not in the best passing accuracy, obviously, because we are trying to go a little bit more quicker passing, so sometimes they will play more risky passes because with the higher tempo. Second best crossing completion, 54% first at the shot on target ratio. Let's look at the team detail stats. So, same as Norwich, we have the most chances created in the league with 121. Also, same as Norwich. Over 100, you can tell this tactic creates lots of chances depending on your striker can convert them or not. Anything else worth highlighting? Well, I already mentioned the most clean sheets, nothing much. We're gonna now go into the schedule, look at how we went in the season. We start off with a 10 new beating in the DFB Pokal Cup first round. Take note, be gone. See how you get knocked out in the first round. <laughs> and then we win quite a few games unbeaten in the league. Also in Champions League beating Lokomotiv 4-0. Losing the first league game is to Augsburg 2-1. Losing to Man City as well in the Champions League. And we didn't lose another game. Oh, I skipped this. 1-0 win against Borussia Dortmund in the league. Very good result at the signal in the park. 1-5-3 against Dortmund at the signal in the park again. Anything else? Draw 1-1 against Bayern away, not too bad. Lost to Man City again. Man City is too hard to beat. Lost 1-3 to Cologne, okay. Won 3 new against Borussia Dortmund, which means we actually won all three. Wow, okay. That's actually very interesting. Then lost 1 new to Real Madrid away in the Champions League first knockout round. Do we won the second round? Oh my god, we beat. Real Madrid 4-1 away at the Santiago Bernabeu to qualify for the next round. Let's look at the stats. It's actually pretty equal. We got more clear cut chances. And we went to the next round. We lost to Leipzig in the league as well in between that. Also got up, knocked out by the Werder Bremen of DFB Pokal. 
Then we lost another league game against Wolfsburg, lose another league game against Freiburg. 1-1-0 against one one against Bayern in Bundesliga though, and here comes the Champions League. 1 2 0 against Chelsea at home, draw 1 1, which means we qualify for the next round again into the semi final. Uh, we got whacked by Liverpool, absolutely destroyed. Aggregate 7 2, but I kind of understand it. Our form at the end of the season didn't end that well. If not, I think we can kind of get into the Champions League final. Hmm, very good. So, I think that's it for today. For the tactic tester for Nab's Bad Company, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe for more, and I will see you again. Bye.